Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your city hall. I'm happy to be here this morning, and I'm very happy to be joined this morning by a number of my colleagues, uh, Councilmember and Mayor Bro Pro Tem Vivian H. Burke here, uh, Councilmember Molly Light from the South Ward, and Councilmember Jeff McIntosh from the Northwest Ward. They joined me in saying how excited we are to be able to, uh, in some way, begin to address uh, some of these issues facing the, the world and our country. The purpose of what we're going to do today is certainly to, to talk about the issue of Ebola. It's on the minds of, of uh, our citizens, it's on your minds, it's on the minds of folks across the world. What we're going to do this morning is to talk about how our community uh, is stepping up uh, to help out and how the community can step up even more to help out. And then we're going to conclude by spending just a little bit of time talking about how our community is preparing, is prepared to address if there is an issue or an incident here in Winston-Salem and Forsyth County. I know a number of my council member colleagues have said to me, uh, you know, they've been approached by citizens, say, how can we help in you know, this whole issue in West Africa, the, the terrible um, uh, things that are going on there, how can we as a community help out? Uh, well, we, we heard that. We also heard from the Liberian organization of the Piedmont, as well as from the Liberian uh, embassy, uh, saying, you know, as a city, what can you do? And so we felt like that there perhaps were some ways that we could help out. And the fact that we are so blessed in this community with such wonderful medical facilities with uh, North Carolina Baptist Medical Center and Novant Forsyth uh, Memorial Hospital here, uh, Medical Center here in our uh, cities, we thought there might be some ways there. So we reached out to these two wonderful institutions and they're going to tell you what they are getting ready to do. Uh, as a slight example of it here today, but we're just so delighted and thankful for their stepping up. Before we move into the medical part of it, though, we want to talk about ways that the average citizen can help out. And there's a great mechanism for directing dollars to West Africa relief efforts. And that's through the uh, Samaritan's Purse organization that's based in Charlotte. I believe that's correct. Is that right? Uh, and Boone, my, my favorite hometown. Uh, <laughs> so today we have with us Mr. Kendall Kafnet, uh, who is the director of the Liberian West African Donations with Samaritan's Purse. Uh, he'll be followed by, well, I'm going to let you speak and then I'll introduce you. Honorable Mayor, thank you for this opportunity and uh, members of the council to be here. Um, my name is Kendall and I'm the current country director for Samaritan's Purse in Liberia and currently heading up the uh, response uh, that is taking place with Samaritan's Purse from our headquarters in, in Boone, uh, North Carolina. Uh, my wife and I have had the privilege of serving in Liberia for the last 10 years and so it's just great to see my mothers and fathers and uncles from Liberia here with us today. It, and I look forward to shaking your hand uh, after this because we can have contact here. Um, we all know about Ebola and, and I had, um, we were there when the outbreak began in March and Samaritan's Purse responded with a massive awareness campaign and we thought we were out of the woods uh, when we had 40 days of no new cases and then unfortunately there was a second wave and we learned that this unprecedented outbreak is a regional uh, situation and, uh, and so we at Samaritan's Purse we got involved clinically in responding to the crisis and uh, we currently have a team of 18 that are on the ground working uh, to, to end this really terrible thing that is happening in Liberia. Having been in Liberia for 10 years, it, it, it honestly breaks my heart to see the suffering that is taking place there and the fear. Um, if you know anything about Liberians, they, they love to be together. They love to shake hands. They have a unique handshake. They, they love to just um, celebrate. And there was so much hope and potential coming off the civil crisis. And then it breaks my heart to see a country that is now being um, really ravaged by this wicked disease that causes fear, isolation. Um, but it will be beat and Liberia will return to where it has been. 
And so it gives me honor to be here today. The, the truth of the matter is, is that currently in Liberia, there are 4,657 cases of Ebola have happened since March. And that of those 4,000, two, over 2,900 have died of this disease. And just to put in perspective, in the last week, there have been 64 deaths in Liberia uh, that have happened. And so it, it is something that is unprecedented. Um, and it's something that needs our attention. And so I'm thankful, Mr. Mayor, to be here today to be able to, again, talk about it. The World Health Organization, the Ministry of Health, Dr. Gwen Agali as a Minister of Health, who's a good friend of mine, has a plan, and it's a three-tiered approach of responding through these Ebola uh, um, uh, units that allow for isolation, but then also a new plan to do these community care centers uh, to provide a, a solution maybe uh, more rurally. But the reality of the situation on the ground is that the numbers are overwhelming. And currently all the beds and all the units are full and people are being turned away. And so as Samaritan's Purse, we are embarking on a home-based care approach because Liberians as a family care for each other. And we want to provide for them uh, protection equipment and some simple medications at the home so that they can take take care of their, their family members. Um, and so this is where these gifts that you see before us and the partnership that Samaritan's Purse has had with Novant for over a decade, it's these type of gifts that bring hope to the situation. And what I see before me is protection equipment, medical equipment, um, but being there and knowing what this will mean as a family, knowing that they will get protection as they care for each other. They will get medicines that are needed. This is going to provide hope for Liberians and for Liberia. And so I want to say thank you to those that are donating uh, these gifts. Uh, I personally know what this will mean for Liberians, for my brothers and sisters who are there. There is hope. And I'm thankful for Winston-Salem. And I heard briefly that it was a, a, the Liberian community in Winston reached out to the mayor's office and said, we want to help. And it was through the mayor's office that uh, we have these gifts before us here. And so uh, I just want to say to the community of, 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 of Winston-Salem and to the mayor's office that these are gifts, but knowing that they're coming from Winston-Salem and they will get to Liberia and they will be used to help somebody that is suffering with Ebola brings great hope. And so I just appreciate the mayor's office facilitating this. Uh, because it is going to bring hope. And so, uh, again, I just want to say to all of you, it is a huge need. There are thousands of thousands of people that are suffering, that are crying today. There will be people that will die today because of Ebola. That doesn't mean we turn around and run away. We, we're not fearful of it. We respect it. But we are morally commanded to help. And so I'm thankful for this opportunity a Samaritan's Purse to be the arm that will help in this way. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kendall. And on our website and in the press information going out will be information on how citizens here in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, the Triad, can make donations directly to a Samaritan's Purse directed to uh, the West African Initiative here and we'll make sure everyone gets that information on how individuals can make contributions and, and help with this cause here. Now I would like to turn the program over to our, our two medical centers who are, are, have brought some examples of uh, equipment and material that they'll be uh, sharing uh, with the West African area. First, uh, call on Dr. Brent Nix, who is the Associate Dean for Global Health at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. And he'll be followed by uh, Mr. Sean Sands, who is the Chief Operating Officer for Novon Health and Forsyth Medical Center. And again, gentlemen, on behalf of the City Council and the citizens of Winston-Salem, let me say how grateful we are for your stepping up and helping out with this. So first, uh, Dr. Dix. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and welcome everyone today. Thanks for the opportunity to come and speak with you. And on behalf of Wake Forest Baptist, uh, it's an exceptional care team process that we look at today. And when we talk about the team, it's the same concept that we, we just heard about from our esteemed colleague from Samaritan's Purse. We're a family. 
whether Novant, whether Wake Forest Baptist, whether Winston-Salem or the communities in which we serve here or in Liberia, we are a family and we've come together. You know, as was clearly delineated, the increasing awareness and the concern of the Ebola epidemic is just the beginning of many things that we've known in the past, but has finally come forward to us here in the United States. You know, we take a step back for a moment and we have to look and understand what it is to understand community health and understand a little bit more in a global context. As an institution founded on training providers to serve overseas in those underserved locations, Wake Forest Baptist has a legacy of impacting positive change in global health. Oftentimes we step back for a second, we say, wait a second, what's, what is this concept of global health? And global health is the simple recognition, the simple recognition that the health of our community in Winston-Salem is inseparable from the health of individuals across the globe. What can happen in West Africa, we know can come to the United States. There's nothing that prevents it from coming to Winston-Salem. But the caveat, as, as the previous speaker had said, it's not about fear, it's about hope. It's about preparedness and it's about education on a going forward basis. The recent events around Ebola and its ongoing impact in West Africa and the initial presence in the U.S. has caused great concern for many of us in our community and around the U.S., let alone around the globe. We've become increasingly aware of health concerns in parts of the country that in the past had merely been something that had perhaps been on the front of a newspaper and not really meant anything to us or touched us individually. We know of the people in our community that have family members in Liberia who've been touched by Ebola. The challenges with this, the challenges for the community as we wrap our arms around them and embrace them in our preparedness process. You know, as an institution of exceptional clinical quality and higher learning, we recognize the value of integrating the understanding of global health into what we practice every day for the benefit of our community in Winston-Salem, the people that we serve on a broader scale and on a global capacity. You know, over the past decade, if we think back, we think about things like SARS, we think about avian flu, we think about H1N1, and the things that have garnered a lot of our attention. Well, Ebola has come forward as that next step. And it's opportunities like this where we come together as a family and a community to support each other and to grow not only in our preparedness and the opportunity to care for each other, but the opportunity to learn from each other as we prepare for the future. With the recent Ebola outbreak, which started in December, came on the radar in March and continues, excuse me, and continues today, we've been keenly aware of this process and our system, as well as Novant's, have been ahead of the curve in preparation. Are we prepared? Absolutely. We're prepared within Wake Forest Baptist. We're prepared within Novant. We're prepared within our health department and the system. We recognize the challenges with the resources associated with that. But we also know that we can learn from our colleagues in West Africa. We can learn substantially from our colleagues in Samaritan's Purse about the unique ways to approach this, the cultural components of it as well, of that aspect, and the lessons learned from Atlanta and from Dallas. You know, Wake Forest Baptist is committed to supporting our local community efforts, the people of Forsyth County, the counties in the region that we serve, the people of Liberia through the Liberian Organization of the Piedmont, working ongoingly with Samaritan's Purse for which many of our students, residents, and faculty have rotated on many of the different hospitals in which they serve on a global scale, as well as with Novant as we work within our county to prepare on things going ahead. It is our commitment, as you can see here by just some of the donations, but the ongoing efforts to change how we approach health care, uh, to improve health and wellness of all individuals, we are dedicated to this, but not out of fear, but out of hope and at looking toward the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nix. You know, Navant Health has a long history of serving in the community and has partnered with Wake Forest Baptist Health uh, all those years, and we look forward to continuing our partnership. We also partner with the local and state health departments to ensure that uh, we are doing everything we can to be ready for any, any contingency. The truth of the matter is that the work that's going on right now in West Africa is the best way to help to extinguish this situation. And the travesty and just the sadness that's, that's a result of uh, what's going on there is, is devastating. The numbers of families who have been uh, displaced or have lost family members, the numbers of orphans. So on behalf of Novant Health, we are very pleased to provide any help that we can to the Samaritan's Purse organization because of the work they do. They make a direct impact. The items that we have donated over the years, and especially now, uh, gloves and shoe covers and gowns and masks and face shields, et cetera, those are all the things that folks need on the ground helping their family members and helping each other to, uh, to, to defeat this disease. So 
over the course of at least a decade, we have had a great relationship and we look forward to continuing that. Over the past four years alone, we've provided over $625,000 worth of gifts and kinds to uh, the Samaritan's Purse organization and we'll continue that commitment. We appreciate all the work that they do. We appreciate the, the health community, healthcare workers uh, are amazing in this county and, and the city. Uh, the city should be very confident and should be very proud uh, of the of the healthcare institutions, both actual hospitals, primary care physicians, uh, throughout the community, urgent care centers, and the, the Department of Public Health and the Department of Health. So uh, we appreciate this opportunity and we will continue to support in any way that we can where we can bring healing to the West African countries. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James Hudner is the uh, president of the Liberian organization of the Piedmont and we've asked him to come today to just express uh, his uh, feelings about this, these gifts and these opportunities to support the, the folks in, in West Africa. Sir. Mr. Hudner. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. I, uh, <coughs> on behalf of the Liberian Organization of the Piedmont, I'd like to seize this opportunity to first uh, uh, <coughs> Say thanks to extend, to extend our thanks and sincere appreciation to you again, Mr. Mayor, and to all the representatives here, representing different organizations, and to you all, the community. I'd like to recognize our uh, the chair lady of our board of trustees, uh, Ms. Mosey Delaney Belton, and members of the Liberian organization represented here. Please stand. Thank you. Uh, what I had a house for, but most of the at this time I work in a different schedule. <clears throat> As you know, the uh, the Liberian organization of the Pete Mount and Liberia in particular has a very long historic connection with the state of North Carolina, in particular uh, this, this great city, Winston Salem. Um, when the uh, outbreak first took place, we reached out to different cities in North Carolina, uh, all the major cities, we reached out to them, wrote them, and uh, fortunately, the only favorable response we got was from our mayor. And so we are so thankful that we have this forum today, giving us the opportunity to uh, explain more on what is ongoing and how we can, how we together can fight this very dreadful disease. Uh, I, my late friend and mentor, Dr. Maya Angelo, once said, if I can paraphrase her, people will forget what you say. People will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you make them feel. And so today, this great city of Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, what you are about to do today will never be forgotten. On behalf of President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the President of the Republic of Liberia, our ambassador accredited to Washington, D.C., His Excellency Jeremiah Salonte, and Liberian far and near, we say thank you. Thank you so much for coming to our aid in the fight to eradicate this disease. We are all God's children. We all live in this one world. We are all neighbors. What effect one person affect all of us? So in this fight, though it originated from, 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 from Africa back in 76, and it keep resurfacing, keep coming back. So that is to tell us something that if we, as human beings, don't come together in you know, a concerted effort and eradicate this disease, it's going to come back again. And for every time it comes back, it's going to take away so many of our citizens of this world. So that's why it's so important that this fight is not a one-man fight, but 
it's a world fight. It's a global fight. And that's why we are so thankful for the kind of effort, the kind of support that we are getting worldwide. The kind of attention that has been given, even though it's not, we wish that it would have been a better attention, not Ebola attention, because we don't want to give the credit to Ebola, because we are going to defeat Ebola. We are going to defeat Ebola. So we are just thankful for all the help. The president of this great country sending in citizens from here to help our people. People from everywhere, part of the world, sending in their citizens to help. Some of the citizens dying. It is hurtful. But I am sure that we are going to defeat Ebola. Wherever it came from, it's going to go back there. We are going to defeat Ebola. The, uh, in our fight, as we speak right now in Liberia, like it is, we have uh, listened to the data from our brother from uh, Samaritan Press, the number was escalating. But we're hearing some good news that some part is slowing down. So that's good. So that means to say that the effort we are making, the support that is being received, is making an impact. But we need more. We need more. And that's why it's so important, again, that we galvanize our effort to make the impact that is necessary to defeat this uh, dreadful disease once and for all. Again, Mr. Mayor, we want to thank you. We want to thank the uh, uh, representative present here, and want to thank you and our brothers and sisters out there. The appeal that we are making today is going to be a continuous effort until this disease is eradicated. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hudner. Uh, certainly, Winston Salem is a compassionate city, and, and we're reaching out. Let me offer my colleagues, Councilmember Light and Councilmember McIntosh, would you like to say a word? And, and thank you, you're good. Uh, Councilmember Light is the vice chair of the Public Safety Committee. Um, I believe that's correct. Is that right? <laughs> a member of the Public Safety, as well as Mr. McIntosh. We thought we'd conclude our uh, meeting today by just talking about the preparedness of this city. You heard uh, Dr. Nix mention that we are ready at both of the medical centers, but you know, it, it could happen in any number of ways. So our city manager has uh, taken some uh, clear demonstrative actions with our police, with our fire, first responders, uh, in, in making sure that we are ready. The overall responsibility for any instance here will be within the Forsyth County Health Department, and we'll hear from uh, it, its uh, director in just a moment. But our, our city manager has uh, directed our staff to uh, develop some additional training to for our first responders in terms of being able to recognize symptoms and uh, issues there. We've also ordered a sufficient number of personal protective equipment uh, for all of our first responders so that we are ready in the case of, of something happening there. And we've created protocols in terms of uh, notifying our partner agencies and with the medical centers here, we have good coordination in that regard. And if something does happen, we will automatically uh, uh, activate our emergency operations center to make sure we're on top of things. Let me call on now Mr. Marlon Hunter, who is the executive director of our Forsyth County Department of Health, to make a few brief comments just about our overall preparedness here. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, uh, City Council. Uh, it is a great honor and a pleasure as the director of the Forsyth County Department of Public Health to be here and to have the opportunity to stand uh, with everyone here uh, today to talk about our, our efforts to be prepared for Ebola. Uh, as you know uh, and have probably read that uh, our state has, has been working together um, uh, with our federal government and here locally uh, to prepare since July. And uh, we recognize at the health department that um, all emergencies are local. Yes, we are preparing at a national level and we are preparing at the state, 
but our community members are going to look to us at the local health department and, and, and to our hospitals and to our local emergency management and various other partners to be prepared and to stand ready to respond. So I feel confident today uh, that based on the current guidelines we have in place um, that we are ready. Our health department uh, does this work day in and day out. And just a little known fact about our public health department in 2016, our agency will turn 100 years old. That is 100 years of public health service in the Winston-Salem Forsyth County community. That is significant. And uh, we uh, work to prepare our communities against communicable and infectious diseases all day, every day, uh, whether it's uh, issues related to Ebola, or uh, enterovirus D68, or chikungunya, or West Nile virus, or any foodborne illness uh, we might come across in our restaurant establishments. We work every day with our community business members and our partners to be prepared to make sure we're doing everything we can to keep our community safe. So um, we know, uh, finally, that uh, when it comes to Ebola, Many community members are fearful. The fear is real. And um, so, and, and since we recognize that uh, at a local level and at a state level, uh, we have uh, worked with our state partners. We have a 1 800 Ebola hotline in place uh, so that we stand ready uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, working in partnership with our poison control department to answer any questions related to Ebola. So again, it gives me a uh, great honor and pleasure to stand here with our community uh, uh, hospitals, uh, Novant and Baptist. Uh, we worked uh, already with our emergency management department, with our EMS departments, and the many, many, many other uh, private businesses, uh, urgent care centers in our community, our private doctors, to make sure everyone uh, has uh, all of the up-to-date and current information uh, they need to be prepared. So um, I'm proud as a public health director uh, to be here with uh, uh, hospital systems like Novon and Baptist uh, who stand with us as a team um, to be prepared. So thank you. Well, thank you. I hope you uh, get the feeling, one, that uh, we are coming together to try as a community to help out with the situation. We are coming together as a community to coordinate our efforts uh, to be prepared in the event that there is a local incident of some sort. Uh, let me thank, again, the two medical centers for your wonderful, wonderful contributions to this effort. Let me thank Samaritan's Purse for your willingness to be the vehicle that our citizens can make donations and help out. We'll be happy to answer questions from the media or otherwise uh, uh, now. So. I have a question. Um, are first responders here in Winston-Salem prepared right now to handle the Ebola situation as far as the protective gear goes? I know you guys said you were ordering some. Um, what about right now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we have the gear that we need for the Ebola situation. We have the gear that we need for the Ebola situation. You know, uh, I'd ask to defer to the city manager in terms, I'm sure the, uh, the EMS folks are, uh, but uh, we're we, um, chief farmers, our chief of our fire department. Chief Anthony Farmer. Good morning. Yes, our first responders are prepared. Um, as we deal with any other type of cause where we respond, we, are, we have protective gear that we wear, facial protection, breathing protection. We wear gloves and those kinds of things. We always are wearing those when we respond to medical calls. Also, we're, as the mayor said, we are gearing up by adding additional um, equipment associated with this type of disease so that we can make sure our firefighters are covered and our police and other agencies are also following the same suit. Yes, firefighters are trained. Again, they, they place their gear on, on any call where they feel that is necessary. So if we would feel that there is a uh, bloodborne pathogen or airborne pathogen issue in a response, we're going to be wearing gloves. We would put on facial protection, N95 masks. In the case of 
any recognition of anything similar to a bloodborne pathogen like Ebola certainly will be wearing gowns and those kinds of things associated with providing extra protection for firefighters. Um, as we've established in our community, EMS is the main responder, so obviously we wanted to restrict any type of interaction with firefighters and other responders when it's not necessary. So EMS will be responding initially, and if we are indeed find that we're in a situation where we need to provide that protection for ourselves, that's what we'll be doing. So just in case you didn't hear the question, a couple things, obviously, from the medical side and preparedness, the things learned from Dallas, the things related to not just the providers. Initially, we recognized that, as you look, if you look uh, from two nights ago, the CDC increased the level of concern related to possible exposures, even in the medical environment. And so we have a heightened level of protective gear that we are implementing. Obviously, it was mentioned as well in the uh, EMS and the fire realm. Um, Ongoing training, I know Novant does it. We do an exceptional job as well with ongoing training, continued training to make sure that you're doing it correctly because that's your, your greatest risk of exposure as a medical provider. The caveat with that is, you know, when you look at the community and those who may have known exposures or otherwise, um, you know, the challenge at this point in time is, is knowing that you have an exposure and appropriately going through the processes that we've put in place within the community to notify your provider and get to the appropriate level of care as it relates. Downstream of that, obviously, is family members that may or may not have been exposed in that interim period of, of the unknowing. Uh, and obviously within our system, and uh, I'm sure within Novant as well, that process is in place not just to care for the patient who has had known exposure and may have a disease process, but also the family members during that period of quarantine if indeed they need to have that. So those processes are in place. A lot of the community physicians or whatnot have educational materials provided by the CDC and others to help foster that as well as from the state of North Carolina. Uh, the most important aspect though is the awareness and the communication and recognizing the simple things you can do, especially as we go into flu season. The same thing holds true with Ebola. Wash your hands ex exquisitely well. Avoid touching your face after you have interactions in different regards. Those are the simple things that we should be considering. Uh, Vernon, would you like to add anything? I have a question for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, has anyone in our area ever been in isolation because of suspicious symptoms? Yeah, at this point in time, we've had no one that's been identified as far as a at-risk individual that's gone either in our system up to our isolated units as it relates to it. I, I've seen the same for Novant as well, at least that we know of at this point in time. Um, you know, we have some, occasionally we have some phone calls from providers in the community that say, I just had somebody who returned from East Africa, not from West Africa. They don't have a fever, but they don't feel quite right. You know, how, well, how do we manage this? And so we address those questions, and a lot of it is education. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, as of this morning before walking in here, uh, there are no known cases within our community. You know, it's one of those things, you know, I'm an emergency physician. I lived in East Africa for a handful of years. I've worked in West Africa, so I've had exposures in these types of things. And, and fear drives a lot of these types of things. Uh, and in part because a lot of the things that you hear may or may not be true. The one thing that we have that's robustly available within Winston-Salem, within North Carolina, and really within the CDC, is point information for the provider, point information for the public that takes it down to the basic level of understanding of what your risks are and relating to that. Uh, you know, the biggest challenge is the unknown. And when we hear of a disruption or we have the concerns of flights coming into the U.S., those are real concerns. At the same time, we recognize that as a government, we're recognizing these things and moving it forward. But more importantly, as a community, we're coming together and working within our community, the pre-hospital first responders, the EMS systems, Novant, Baptist as collaborative working within our community and all the communities that serve in this region uh, to come together for the education piece. If it's unclear as, it, what, as to what to know and what to watch for, those things are readily available uh, online um, and obviously our system in Novant, I'm sure be happy to help provide any additional information that may be required. One more question. Sure. Ballpark figures 
figure about what's the value of all this that you're sending? Sure. Now let Sean speak specifically as it relates to the, the Novant component. Um, you know, one of the things that we have at Wake Forest and I'm in charge of is our Office of Global Health. And we have a supply warehouse where we send things to Samaritan's Purse and to other organizations that are doing good work in our community locally, in our rural communities, but globally as well. And the things that you see here, much of what has been supplied are the medical necessities for providers going in or providers on the ground to stay protected. As been mentioned, the N95 mask, you know, the ability to go ahead and have barrier protection, the appropriate suits and gowns for people to go in to provide care for those who really have that servant heart to go and serve these individuals. We want to participate in the protection, knowing that we have individuals that may be participating, but it's our job, if we can't be there, to assist those who can. Samaritan's Purse and many others. So the vast majority of what we supplied, um, you know, I think it's, it was in the ten to $15,000 range worth of equipment, uh, but most of it related to those types of things to keep people safe. I'll let Sean speak on the Novant side. Yeah, similar. Um, so all the things that you see ahead of you here are the exact types of things that will be needed, uh, primarily in home care, but also in some of the clinics. So uh, things like gloves and masks and gowns and shoe covers and, and, and things to protect your face, um, some IV sets, some minor procedure trays, and a similar amount of money. Um, again, we uh, over the past four years, has been a continual thing for us, um, over $625,000 of, of items. And it's, it's a relationship that we will continue. I wanted to answer, answer your question a little bit more um, about protecting family members. If we have an identified case, as you already heard from the medical side, you know, what would take place, but from the perspective of the health department, you know, we have our communicable disease nurses who will, who will conduct uh, contact tracing. I'm sure you've heard that term uh, consistently throughout our discussion um, around the country about uh, Ebola. So we will get out immediately. Uh, get in contact with family members, conduct a risk assessment to determine what level of care close uh, family members or, or those close contacts might need um, to provide that education that, that we're all talking about here today. So it's very close, uh, very, very quick. As soon as we determine that we have a diagnosis from the laboratory, you know, our teams are already available um, uh, to answer any questions and for any family members. Also, to, to get the information to the public, to your 1-800 number, yes. give that again. Yes, and also you know, we, uh, for the individuals that have uh, immediate questions uh, and concerns, keep in mind that we are, are uh, right uh, at the beginning of the flu season, and, and we know that some of the symptoms associated uh, uh, with Ebola uh, and many other uh, illnesses that we know of the onset uh, are flu-like symptoms. And, um, and so we want to encourage you, of course, to come by the health department and get your flu shots for free. Uh, we offer them uh, for the, uh, to the community. I got mine yesterday. You know, but if you have questions in particular, um, you know, please uh, make contact at 1-800-222-1222. Also, Mr. Like, we wanted you to also know that uh, the firefighters and our other responders aren't taking this situation lightly. We think we're prepared um, for dealing with bloodborne pathogens. However, we're not taking it for granted. So we're uh, providing additional training for our firefighters. We're encouraging them to make sure they follow procedures. We're looking at this, uh, training just next month to make sure the early um, weeks in November to make sure we have our protocols in line and we're following those. And the CDC is sending out information on a regular basis as we find out more and as our medical professionals help us understand more. So we're not taking this lightly. We're gearing up, we're training, we're reiterating what we need to do and enhancing our knowledge on a daily basis. So um, feel reassured that we're working to make sure we stay protected and are ready to protect as we go out and respond. Just a uh, clarification. I guess my question wasn't stated as clearly. The, you know, I understand the preparedness on the ground here. What I really was asking about is uh, when we send out these supplies to Liberia, um, do we have training on the ground there? To, to, for the use of the proper use of the uh, materials. Thank you for your question on, on training on the ground. I, I can assure you that all of the medical supplies that will be used to eradicate Ebola um, is done in conjunction with a very thorough training 
a curriculum that has been developed and has been approved by the Ministry of Health, has been vetted by the CDC in terms of how to use this equipment properly, uh, how to dispose of it properly. Um, and so I can assure you that as far as Samaritan's Purse's implementation that will uh, involve these supplies, it comes with a very robust training as well as a, uh, a daily follow-up uh, to ensure that it is being used properly and if there are any further questions that it will be will be handled. Samaritan's Purse currently has uh, a, a staff, a national staff of over 400 who are all focusing on uh, Ebola um, and so um, you can be assured that the training will be given so that appropriate use will happen. We currently have a, uh, a staff of 400 Liberians who continue to serve. Um, uh, we have a, a motto in our response team that we want to uh, help Liberians to help Liberians. And so that's our focus, is, um, is to ensure that that empowerment takes place. We do have a, uh, a response team that are on the ground. There are 18 of them in total, um, and they come from various places in uh, in North America. Um, there are some that are from um, the Watauga County area and uh, we have a very um, stringent reentry protocol and process that will take place which includes a self-sequestering for 21 days, a monitoring of health through taking temperatures and a reporting to the Department of Health that has to take place on a daily basis as well as we have been uh, indicated by uh, the CDC that uh, of the hospitals that are ready to uh, take anybody that for some reason might become infected. So uh, what we have done as an organization recognizing that we are responsible for the public health is that we have set our standards actually higher and our thresholds lower than the CDC just to ensure that we are being responsible. There is, uh, I'm in contact with the team over there many times a day. Um, it, uh, I appreciated what, uh, um, what my father said, that uh, there is seemingly some hope. Uh, I've received response from a, a district, FOIA district, that currently was part of the epicenter and the outbreak in December when it began in March and onwards, and there haven't been any new cases in that district. And so in some parts of Liberia, uh, there has been no new cases in FOIA district for two weeks. And so there, is, there, there seems to be maybe a, a corner turning. But this is a time when we have to continue responding more because we don't want to do what we did in the first phase and think that we were through it. Um, but what I have heard is that uh, it, it, there's a lot of fear. Um, you know, generally, Monrovia is a bustling city, and um, uh, I was talking to one of our responders, and they said that it seems to be unusually quiet. Um, there are no schools that are currently ongoing. Um, one of the sad things about this Ebola crisis is we, uh, the medical facilities in Liberia have been closed down completely because of just not being able to protect the healthcare workers. And so there's, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear. Uh, Liberians are very uh, celebratory, joyous people, and uh, at this time that's missing. But there is hope, and, and that will return, and we will be able to shake hands again. Um, you know, in a, a, a culture where contact is just critical, uh, Liberia has a unique handshake. There's a no-touch policy, um, and, and that just makes a big difference. And so, um, while it is sad, while there is fear, um, apprehension, um, I think and I know that we will beat it and there will be hope and we will celebrate again. Thank you very much. Uh, folks will be around uh, afterwards uh, if you want to catch anybody for additional questions. But thank you all for coming and being here today. I think you've heard we're coordinated, we're collaborated, and we're compassionate. So thank you for being here. <laughs>